Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please, for Mr. John Minus, a brother from another mother. You know, they told me this wasn't going to be a minstrel show. <laughs> but there he is. This is not me for a change. Hey, how's everybody doing? I, um, let's see, I have a lot of identity issues, so let's just get into that. <laughs> First of all, I am not a nigger. Now, I know some of you may have been confused on that point, but let me just tell you, it's not for lack of trying. I failed my state licensing exam. Like, I didn't know if you know, like, whenever people go up and say, yo, man, I'm a, yo, son, yo, son, I'm a real nigger, they have to pass a test to say so. You have to like study for that. You can't just like go up to people and say that. You have to really study and try. And I didn't. I I, I failed my um, taste difference between Kool Aid test. Like it was. <laughs> so I'm gonna study for next next year. I don't use that word a lot. That N word. I, I actually never use it when I'm not on stage. I only use it when I'm doing comedy for two reasons. Uh, number one. It's hilarious. Number two, no. No, actually, number one, when I say it, it's, it's incisive social commentary. When white comedians say it, it's racist. So it's basically just me getting a little bit of reparations back. That's all. It's the only bit of black privilege I have, really. See, if you had thought about it, the real joke of that is I just said black privilege, which doesn't exist. <laughs> Kind of, like, the, the, one of the real things about being me and looking like this is that sometimes I just want to scare people. <laughs> and if I ever want to scare people, all I, I, I have to do really is go outside, and that pretty much works. <laughs> like, like, uh, like Anon said, I am large and black, and I don't look friendly. So. That works. One of the other pieces of black privilege is that in a room such as this, where I would be one of the other only, uh, let's say, darker colored people, um, I'm the arbiter of comedy. People all look to me to see whether they can laugh at something. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea how many comedy clubs I've been in where like, somebody will tell a racist joke and everybody will be like, <laughs> oh, he's laughing, he's laughing, it's okay, it's okay. Sometimes I'll just fuck with people and be like, you know, yeah, I'll think it's funny, but I'll be like. <laughs> people will be like, ha, 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 He's not laughing. Where did we park? So yeah, that's cool. Funny thing about me being a scary black man is that I'm uh, not. Like I, let, let, let me just put it this way. When other kids were watching G.I. Joe and Airwolf and A-Team to learn how to be, you know, good, strong men, I was watching Golden Girls. Because I was just hoping that one day I would have the regal bearing and deep baritone vase of Dorothy Zbornak. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I just wanted to be as funny and masculine as B. Arthur when I was a kid. <laughs> and I'm still trying to get there. That's the sad part. Like, I... I, you know, and then I got older and puberty happened and then I wanted to just get laid like Blanche because like everybody did Blanche and I was like, that seems like a cool life. <laughs> that didn't happen either. Yeah, this guy, not a lot of sex. Like I know a lot of you may be wanting to throw yourself at me and like I understand it, but it doesn't really happen. <laughs> Turns out I just ended up like Sophia, old, bitter, alone. And only the Italian man want to sleep with me. I don't get that part. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, I spent all my time watching, like, I wa watching Golden Girls and Nurses and Murphy Brown and Designing Women. It's amazing that I've ever seen a vagina, much less been in one. Like, <laughs> I know more about, about female sitcoms than I know about Soul Train, which is sad. It makes me sad on the inside. A lot of things make me sad. What, what makes you sad, Alex? <laughs> yeah, you thought I didn't notice that, did you? 
No, no, I, I, I picked that up. I picked that one up. So, yeah, I, I know I've already disappointed some of you. My name is John, no apostrophe, no extra letters, just they're like, oh, there's a black guy on his show. Like, he's probably gonna have be named like DeAndre S or something, no? Good Christian name, John William Minus. Yeah, just, I'm not sure where the Minus came from, though. Like, I have a, I, I did some research and I thought it might be German which kind of made sense when I thought about myself because like, I really like fast cars, I love sausage, I love beer, and I love sticking it to the Jews. So like, I have a lot of things, not the way you're thinking, I mean with my penis <laughs> in a sexual manner. We, we all understand what, all right. <sighs> Jews get a bad rap. They really do. Like I, I grew up in Woodbridge, um, and my, my first crushes were all were like they were Indian girls and Italian girls and Jewish girls. And as I got older, I realized that I could just shorten it and say I like swarthy girls with big noses, and that pretty much just encompassed all my fetishes. <laughs> that that means hairy. Just what? Oh, what? <laughs> I was trying to judge you guys, but I'm like, oh, no way, I'm the asshole. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I really, I really do like Jewish girls. Like, they, they have like, you know, it, and it's not for anything deep. Like, trust me, it's su completely superficial. I really, Jewish girls have very, very, ni very nice breasts. Like, they're just round and they sit high and they're like, I call them jubies. I really like jubies. <laughs> and I've always been in pursuit of jubies, so. And I feel like if we just took that stereotype and like passed it around, like maybe it would help in this world. Like I am trying to fight anti-Semitism with sexualization and objectification. What are you doing, huh? <laughs> you look at me any way you want. I'm doing something to make this world a better place. I'm trying to get laid in the process. Um, yeah, I... I if you may have noticed by now, I uh, may not sound the way you would expect it. I have an accent, and if any of you have trouble understanding me, I, under I understand. It's a thick accent, it's a Caucasian accent. Um, <laughs> it's natural, I didn't go to like school to learn this. I didn't, like, I didn't practice this so I could get loans over the phone. This is just how I sound. <laughs> like. I know how, and like, this is another reason I don't use that N word a lot, is because I have absolutely no credibility with black slang whatsoever. Like, Mitt Romney can say my nigga with more credibility than I could. Like, I realize this. Like, if I say that too much, like, black people start thinking, he's not saying it to me, he's saying it at me. <laughs> like, I've nearly gotten beaten up. They're not, is he, is he calling me one or is he calling me one? said like I, I don't I, I, I when I was in high school I was it, it was much like this room it was me and a bunch of white people and like I, I didn't care because like I was very sure of myself like I'm very smart and I was pretty strong and everything and I sometimes realized I like, sometimes when black people grew up around a lot of white people so it makes them like really angry and they either become really militant or they completely assimilate and they hate black people. And I didn't do either, because like, I wasn't really a black supremacist and I really didn't like being the white people, because very frankly, the white people I grew up around were trash. So I was like, oh, I'm glad I'm not them. <laughs> like, I told that, I, I said that joke one time, the guy, and the guy who came after me was like, hey, I didn't know we had a black supremacist in the crowd. I'm like, me? Black supremacists? You know, like, I don't know. D it, it's, it, it, it bothers me when like, I just try and say something nice about myself and people always make this leap to, oh, he's a black supremacist, he's got his fist in the air all the time, you know? Like, Dan Quayle would be a better black supremacist than me, like, at this point. I, I'm not a anything, I'm a John supremacist. I think I'm better than everybody else. Like, not anybody's race. I'm just an egotistical narcissist. <laughs> Which is redundant, but whatever. Well, wow, that was three big wins in the world. Jess would hate this set. Um, <laughs> pick on a dyslexic kid. 
But don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm from the streets. I am. I'm from the hard, some hard streets, dangerous streets. People lost lives all the time on the streets I was from. I'm from the streets of rage. I'm from the uh, street fighter. I'm from that street paper boy was on. I'm from lots of... St no Nintendo fans? All right. I do know the hood, though. I know the hood. Dr. Doom wears a hood. There's a hood over a clitoris. Under the Red Hood was a very good Batman movie. If, if you can tell, I'm not talking about like the ghetto. I'm just, I'm a geek is what I'm saying. Like I just, I never got that whole being popular thing. Like as if I didn't have enough trouble with women, I decided let me f only interest myself in things that will keep women 200 yards away from me at all times. Along with my, you know, feminine nature. It was all good, you know, whatever. I. Yeah, so let's see, like, I, I wasn't really, I never really knew what kind of person I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to be a little more masculine, so I went and started liking football, which, you know, it only helped a little bit because I have an irrational hatred for the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's really, like, bad. And whenever, and I decide, and I realize I ha I can't go out because like I go out and I'm like you know all right John don't 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 be a stereotype don't be that angry black man you know that's what everybody's been thinking about you don't want to back that up and I go and watch football in public and I'm like fucking ah, ah, damn it catch the ball Eli you ass ah didn't work didn't work. Um, <laughs> you know, it being Black History Month, I've thought a lot about black history and things that went bad and things that went right. And one of the things I think we gave up on a little too soon was uh, the Jim Crow laws. <laughs> now, hear me out. I heard a lot of things about different peoples in my life. And there's one thing I've noticed, and this is true, white people kiss their dogs on the mouth. I don't want any of that. Separate water fountains was a good idea. <laughs> Y'all can have yours, and we can have ours. Because people who don't understand that French Poodles is just a name and not a suggestion need their own water fountains, okay? There's other things I don't like. Like, when I go to the bathroom, every now and then there'll be a white guy peeking over to me to see if it's true what they say about us in a bathroom. <laughs> Separate bathrooms, good idea. It bothers me, that one specifically bothers me because for me, this guy, not true. <sighs> not true. I don't have a big penis. It's by choice. Because again, I don't want to be a stereotype, you know? I could have gone for the extra large package, but no, I went with something sensible. You know, I didn't want to be tacky with my dick. And I never understood the women who like really large penises anyway. Like they call them size queens. Like I know there's some in this room. Don't you all look like, oh. oh. I know there's some size queens in here. Alex is a size queen. Like that's why she put that I in her name. She was little, you know, phallic symbol. Yeah, you know. I never understood because I'm like, why would you want something 13, 14 inches inside of you anywhere? Like. If you want a dick that big, you might as well just climb a telephone pole and slide your way down. It'd have the same effect. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to have penis this far in your body. This is, this is where your daddy was supposed to put love and self-esteem. That's... No amount of dick is going to fill that hole in your... in your pride. Like... Real love... Real love's gonna fill that hole. You might, you might need some therapy. Porn stars aren't gonna do it. Porn stars aren't gonna do it. And, and, and for that matter, like I know, I know the uterus is an incredibly resilient organ, but... Did I get a woo? <laughs> Somebody in here had a baby and their pussy snapped back like that. <laughs> She's like, you damn right. 
resilient. <laughs> we all want a resilient vagina, don't we? Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> what? it's the ones that aren't that I'm worried about, because if you're one of those size queens, you're gonna get stretched out down here, right? It might not just snap back, like, you know, the members of this audience. Like, it might just get, it might just stay that way. Like, I went down on a girl once, and her vagina did not snap back. I looked inside, and my God, it was full of stars. It was huge in there. Like, I threw a penny in to see where it would hit bottom. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> like, I yelled hello, and I heard it back three or four times. It was deep. It was deep in there. <laughs> there was a kid flying a dragon inside. <laughs> And like some, some, some of my friends asked me, well, was, was it like there nothing in there? I'm like, no. It, it wasn't a hole, because a hole would have been something. It was nothing. I messed that up a little, but whatever. <laughs> I'll try you. All right. If you're going to get that, you're going to get it. If you're not, just pretend it never happened. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you, you guys are great. I... Uh, I had this, I, I went on, I, I've been to the South a few times, and boy, is my tolerance for racial injustice tired. No? All right. I, I, did, a, I did a show there once, and this guy, um, and I, I said that this, I said, I said some joke, and I was like, hey, do you understand? And the guy's like, well, what you trying to say? And I'm like, did you understand what I mean? Like, and he's like, I, I don't get what you're saying. I'm like, Look, I know, if nothing else, my enunciation is perfect. <laughs> like, this guy was trying to start something with me. I'm like, no, no, wait. I'm way too smart to fight with a redneck in North Carolina. But all those times, like, that was nothing. All those times I've been to the South, that was the most racist thing that ever happened to me was in Boston, of all places. I know this may shock some of you, but Boston is incredibly racist. It's the only place I've ever had the N-word yelled at me in anger. And it kind of made me sad because, you know, this was in, I was in high school and I was like young and naive, I, I understand that. But I really thought we were past that, you know? I really thought that we were at a place in this time in America where like, you know, people just walk around. And the worst part, I was with a girl from Canada, she was black too, and I was like, oh well, here's our country. <laughs> Welcome to America, and word like is, the absolute worst part of it though, it was right in front of Cheers. And, I really like that show. Like, it just kind of ruined it for me forever. <laughs> now, whenever I watch Cheers, and, and you know, the, Norm comes in the door, they yell, Norm! I'm like, oh man, what would they yell if I came in the door? <laughs> it's supposed to be the place where everybody knows your name. That is not my name. My name is John Minus, and you guys have been great. Thanks a lot. Well done, man. <laughs>